Hello, I'm Tim, the Woodworking Maniac, and today I wanted to show you a new tool that I have in my shop. It's actually a new drum sander that has replaced a few different generations of drum sanders that I've had in my shop. This is a Supermax 25-2 ES drum sander, and this is replacing the Grizzly 24-inch double drum sander that I previously had in my shop. Um, you might not have really seen that in any videos or anything like that, because basically I didn't really care for that Grizzly, and I hardly even used it. Um, but you probably saw the drum sander that I had prior to that, which was a Performax 2244 drum sander. It's a 2244 Pro. And uh, that was one of uh, Supermax Tools' like first models of the Performax 2244 Pros that I had. Um, and it was before they had added quite a few different features on there. So I had one of the original models of that machine. And I really liked it, but there were a few different things on there that just, uh, I, I knew that I needed a, basically a bigger and beefier machine. And that's the reason I ended up getting that Grizzly. Now, I got that Grizzly about the same time that I got that, uh, got this 20-inch, uh, uh, planer. And so it's been a while. And I've, I've had that Grizzly for quite some time. Just haven't been happy with it and haven't hardly used it. I started looking around for a different drum sander to replace it and I looked at just about everything that's out there and basically kept on going back toward Supermax and this is the machine that I decided needed to be in my shop. And let me, let me tell you a few different reasons why. First off, uh, my experience with that Performax machine really kind of sent me back towards Supermax quite a few times uh, and, and kept directing me back, back towards that. So it was kind of a good history there. Um, but one thing this machine has that uh, I, I really missed with the uh, the Grizzly, or the Performax machine that I had had variable speed uh, feed on it, and the Grizzly did not. This one here does have variable speed, but it also has a feature that my Performax machine was one of the originals, and they added later, but with that original model, it did not have, and that's called IntelliSand. And that's actually part of this, uh, the, the feed here that when you actually feed some material through here and it detects that you're feeding it through too fast or you're trying to take off too much material at one time and it can actually f uh, feel some hesitation or anything like that, that it automatically slows down the feed rate. This way you don't end up burning on, on, with burning on your material or burning up your sandpaper. So it ends up saving the material you're actually sending through and also it saves on your sandpaper material itself because as soon as you end up burning on that sandpaper it's really hard to actually uh, clean up your sandpaper and actually get good usable sandpaper out of that. Uh, for the most part once you've burned on that sandpaper that sandpaper is toast and you're going to have to replace that strip of sandpaper on there um, and, or not use that section and if you end up burning right in the middle there you're going to have to use only half of your uh, drum sander at any given time, and that gets a little annoying. So I did that countless times with my Performax drum sander because I sent stuff through there too fast, quite a few times. But this thing had an IntelliSand feature, which you'll see here. I've got a, a cutting board that I ended up uh, using an older table saw blade, which ended up leaving some burn marks. And I'm sending this end grain cutting board here with these burn marks on this uh, cutting board and I'm intentionally sending it through here too fast. By doing that the machine automatically can tell that I'm sending it through here too fast and with the end grain cutting board that's a really hard material for it to actually try to sand. So it slowed it down and then sent it through nice and slow and did a really nice sanding on it and actually cleaned it up very very well. Cleaned those burn marks off of there for me as well. So it ended up doing a very good job. So that's one thing that really kept sending me towards uh, Supermax Tools. And I think all of their sanders, they have an entire lineup of, of different sanders. They have some smaller machines in this one and also some that are, I think, even twice the size of this one. So they've got some that are uh, quite a bit bigger. So really awesome sander uh, uh, on the IntelliSand. This machine actually has a three horsepower motor on it and uh, my Performax machine that I had before uh, was about half that power. I want to say it was a one one and a half horsepower it might even been at one and three quarter horsepower but it was a 110 machine and 
whenever I would kind of bog it down, I would trip a, trip a breaker uh, quite a few times. I, I did it countless times. So that was kind of annoying. So I definitely wanted a machine that had a good, uh, good power to it and definitely a 220 machine because that's kind of what I already had it wired up for. Uh, so that was another reason I kind of went this route. Also, uh, another real awesome thing about this machine, especially in comparison to the Grizzly. Um, the Performax machine, changing sandpaper on that was a dream. It's the same thing with this. Changing sandpaper on here takes no time whatsoever. It's got a clip on the front. You just hook the sandpaper on, you wrap it around, and then it's got a little spring clip on the back that you catch it, and that, that puts tension on the sandpaper and holds it in. And uh, you can see right here, it is actually just extremely quick and easy to do. Whereas with the Grizzly, you had to actually put tension on the sandpaper with uh, like a spring tension on the sandpaper before you even start wrapping it. And then you had to hold that tension as you're wrapping the sandpaper all the way around. And that was so annoying and kind of tedious as you're doing it. Trying to do it by yourself was really really challenging I did it by myself quite a few times but it was just annoying and then once you get to the end you have to actually tape it on and you have to have tape to, to hold your sandpaper on there as kind of an extra accessory uh, if you go to like Grizzly and actually watch a video that, that they have an instruction video on how to actually add sandpaper to it they show you to have two people to add sandpaper to that machine so it takes According to them, it takes two people to add sandpaper to their machine, uh, which I have had my wife help me out adding sandpaper to it, and it is definitely easier with two people. There's no doubt about that. But changing sandpaper on this, very, very easy. So I, that's another thing that I really loved about this machine. Also, this machine has a couple digital readouts over here. Now, on the side, uh, there is a wheel that can actually raise and lower the back drum. So one of these readouts on the bottom here shows you how high that back drum is in comparison to the front drum. So I'll get to that in just a second. This top readout tells you what thickness your material will be once it comes out the other end. So that's really, really awesome. And I've got that dialed in to where it's accurate to the thousandth of an inch, which is mind blowing. To be able to send something through here and know basically down to a thousandth of an inch that it's going to be that thick and just basically be able to raise this or lower this and know that that's how thick it's going to be is really awesome, especially with just sanding. So that is extremely handy having that dialed in. But this bottom number, like I said, that is how high and low the back drum is in comparison to the front drum. Now the reason you would want to have that a little bit lower, depending on the sandpaper that you have, now, on the side here, next to the wheel, they've actually got a small little guide showing you, in comparison, say, right now I've got 80 grit and 120 grit on there. They recommend that you have it a hundredth of an inch lower than the front drum. And the reason for that is, sandpapers are different thicknesses, um, just due to the grits and the, the actual sandpaper material and, and such that's on there. So when you're running your material through there, you actually want it to sand with that 80 grit, but you also want it to sand with that 120 grit. If that 80 grit takes all that material off and that 120 grit is the same depth, then that 120 grit is basically just going to barely touch it and not actually do any sanding. You want it to actually do some sanding because you're wanting to send material through here one time and actually do two sandings in that one pass. So that's the reason you would want that, that back drum a little bit lower. But one feature about that that I really like is the fact that you can lower that even further for a different, different reason. Say you want to turn this thing into a single drum sander for an additional task. I've got 80 and 120 on there right now. But let's say I run the material through there and I want to do another pass with 180 grit. Well, what I can do then is lower that back drum down, say, a quarter of an inch change out that 120 grit to 180 grit sandpaper and then run my material through there and I can know that it's only going to hit that back drum because I've got that much lower than the front drum and I'm not going to try to take off a quarter of an inch in one pass anyway. So if that is a quarter of an inch lower than that front drum, that front drum is not even going to touch the material. 
So then I'm using it as a single drum sander and I'm only doing 180 grit pass with it. So I'm not worrying about doing actually two sandings with that one pass. So I could do a, a nice final clean uh, fine sanding with it. So that's one thing that's really awesome about that digital readout. And then with that digital readout, I can just raise it right back up to that hundredth, hundredth of an inch and know it's right back in place where I wanted it to be in the first place. So that's really handy as well. Also on this, uh, when it was shipped to me, it came basically fully assembled. All I had to do was add the two wheels, the, uh, the, the wheel to raise and lower the, the whole drum assembly and then the, the wheel on the side to raise and lower that back drum. That's all I had to do to assemble the machine itself. Everything else came fully assembled. And you could definitely tell that they take care of how they ship it to you. It was on a big pallet and mounted very, very securely. So I was really happy about that. I did get a few accessories on here. I got the in-feed and out-feed tables, and those were really simple to, to mount on. It was just a few bolts to mount the tables to the brackets, and then two bolts to mount the brackets to the actual machine. And then I also got the, uh, the mobile base, and this was probably the most simple mobile base to uh, put together ever. So I put the mobile base together, and I've got it on that mobile base. Um, so it's been a really awesome machine. I have actually used this thing quite a few times already before actually getting this video out. Uh, I wanted to get a little bit of experience on the machine before I actually talked about it. But uh, I've been very happy with it and uh, you'll probably end up seeing me use this thing quite a bit because I have a tendency to use uh, this machine with just about everything that I send through the shop at this point. So I'm, I've been extremely happy with it. But I hope you all enjoyed uh, watching this video. I just wanted to give you a little rundown as, as to this machine and, and why this one is replacing all the, the previous models that I had. And uh, Definitely check out Supermax's website. They've got a, a whole lineup of, uh, of different models uh, to fit your needs. This may be a little bit larger than what you're wanting in your shop or maybe smaller than what you're wanting in your shop. Like I said, they have some I think that are even about twice this size. So uh, definitely check that out. Um, but I uh, hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, if you have, definitely hit that like or subscribe button and uh, check out some of my previous videos as well. There's going to be a lot more to come and uh, hopefully sometime soon I'll uh, get this shop cleaned up and do a pretty cool shop, video, shop tour video for you guys. Y'all have a good one. God bless.